On the first day after Occupy Wall Street began last September, the question arose, how do you feed a movement? A group of people answered in the most fundamental way, with bagels and peanut butter, and the OWS Kitchen Working Group was born. In the days of the occupation of Zuccotti Park, hundreds volunteered to help prepare and serve food. Additionally, contributions came in a steady stream of fresh produce, food products, and cash donations, supplemented by pizza and restaurant delivery. Next came the help of Liberty Cafe, a food pantry in East New York, Brooklyn, offering the use of their cooking facilities. The OWS Kitchen Working Group, which became known simply as Kitchen, served up to 4,000 people a day and became the largest source of free food in New York City. Persevering even after the eviction of protesters from Liberty Square, Kitchen maintained a presence for the hungry in various public locations such as Union Square and the steps of Federal Hall and regularly fed the working groups of Occupy Wall Street as they continued meeting in the atrium of 60 Wall Street, a privately owned public space. Continually stretched thin, Kitchen continued preparing meals through the OWS May Day celebrations. And after May Day, exhausted but not finished, Kitchen scaled back to simple food distribution such as fruit and energy bars. Kitchen is now gearing up to feed the thousands expected to flock to New York City for S17, the one-year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. How will this happen? We spoke with Ethan Murphy, a prominent Kitchen member, to find out. Saturday and Sunday are going to be days of education and training, and we'll be serving to um, the pop-up occupation in Washington Square Park and at, at the concert in uh, Foley Park. So we'll be bringing food to the masses assembled for these events. Uh, lunches will be served sort of as a um, handheld meal, sandwiches, wraps, uh, fresh fruit, uh, things of that nature that people can take with them as they're going throughout their day. And dinner will be served more as a, a communal, um, sit-down, shareable meal where we can all discuss the issues that brought us together. Especially on Monday where um, all the action is going to be surrounding uh, Wall Street. We want the people to be well nourished while they're participating in these events. So uh, we're working closely with people delivering on bicycles or um, carrying carts and, and handing out food. And it's, you know, handing out food to the whole community, not just OWS. Um, leading up to S17, a lot of the farms have reached out to us, the Occupied Farms and Feed the Movement. Um, we've had people from Food Not Bombs reach out to us. So we have some interest in providing uh, donations. Um, we're working to receive all those this week and start production on Wednesday uh, to serve Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, we're also doing some fundraising to try to supplement uh, the donations with all of the uh, materials we'll need to actually do the service. All of the um, you know, plates and uh, hotel pans and the things that we're going to require to actually transport the food. We are accepting donations uh, both in food uh, and supplies, also with uh, money donations which can go to the Action Resource Fund who's been the primary fundraiser for this S17 event. And we're trying to raise about $10,000 to do it. 9,000 meals, $10,000, it's about $1.33 a meal. So what we're working for in the future is to build a nonprofit community center that will be that will be operated like a restaurant on a donation basis, um, full service um, event space to be sort of a incubator for community involvement uh, and hopefully you know change the way that. Um, the, the food industry serves the communities and actually encourages, you know, a more um, participatory model. The restaurant will definitely be um, a space with large communal tables, also with um, rooms for meetings and maybe uh, presentations. Um, so yes, it won't be just a like sit down, have your meal, and leave type of restaurant. It'll be more of a, 
a community-based um, town hall. Yeah, that's really interesting how he wants to keep this going even past Occupy Wall Street and take it to the community. And, and use it as the basis for community building, which has already been demonstrated to be very effective. Exactly. I mean, the way to get people together is definitely food. The churches use it and uh, community centers use it. It's a great way to get people to show up. And then that's a great way to get people talking, too. And the model that it presents of, of just giving, giving food away and, and just trusting that there will be food tomorrow is just the complete opposite of the ethos of the capital system that we're in. I think it served very well to just viscerally demonstrate the idea that another world is possible. It was incredibly beautiful, and I've, I heard the kitchen called the heart of Occupy a few times, and in many ways it was. It definitely was. They definitely um, took care of all those people in a very positive way. It was really great. You got to keep people fed, and that's how they're able to stick out there, stick it out, out there when, when um, you know, the weather was getting worse and people were still out there in their tents and they're still having food, and no one was messing with it either, which was great because that's kind of Everybody tough in New York. Exactly, exactly. Everyone respected Kitchen. Exactly. Was exactly. Everyone respected kitchen. <laughs> Even the police seemed to respect it, at least. They went, the they went to the library. Around. The police run around. Exactly. They food. wanted some free pizza, too. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> they didn't respect the library as much, but at least they respected the food. <laughs> oh, different levels of appreciation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>